Hi, everybody. We're back. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and this is SiliconAngle.tv's continuous coverage of Sapphire Now. And we're here. This is the third year we've been at Sapphire, and uh, we're here with Jeff Kelly, who is also with Wikibon. He's Wikibon's big data analyst. Jeff, thanks for popping in here for a minute. John Furrier had to go quickly to another meeting. He'll be back shortly. And um, so, Jeff, let's talk a little bit about um, SAP and, you know, the big, the big story there te technology-wise is HANA. You've been covering that. Um, you know, what's your angle on, on SAP and big data? Uh, well, they've, they've had some contradictory stories over the last year about big data and even embracing the term. Uh, but I think, you know, they're in a position where they are a little bit more focused on delivering what you might call more practical, fast data to their customer base, which is not necessarily a bad, bad choice. Um, but they've also got the Sybase portfolio, which we didn't hear too much about Sybase from a data warehousing perspective at Sapphire this last year, but I'm suspecting we will this year. I've already talked to a couple of Sybase customers using Sybase IQ, their columnar scale-out data warehouse for pretty large analytic jobs. So uh, I think we're going to hear more about that. I hope we hear more about that this week. So I know it's nuanced, but you know, is is Hannah, in your opinion, you know, part of the big data movement? I think I think it qualifies in some circumstances. If that's Hedging my bets enough. Oh, that's a major hedge there. But <laughs> okay, so what circumstances does it does it qualify? Well, I mean, uh, my definition of big data, I, I look at it a couple different ways. There's the technology, and we all heard the different definitions: data that's too big or too fast or too many types of structured uh, elements to process with normal relational technology. Non-traditional. Non-traditional, right. right. So, but the other way to look at it is big data as a mindset. That is. Where the old way of doing analytics and BI was you modeled the warehouse, it took months, maybe years to model a warehouse, ask the questions beforehand, the questions you knew you were going to ask, model the, the data warehouse to answer those questions, and then kind of massage the data and deliver it as a report. To me, big data is a mindset that says, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to take the data as it comes. We're going to take it where, wherever it leads us, we're going to go. We're going to ask questions uh, in an ad hoc fashion. We're going to explore the data. We're going to uh, look to, to develop new lines of business, new types of ways to deliver uh, services to customers, for example. So it's a, it's a kind of a flipping in a, the traditional BI on its head. So if you look at it from that kind of that angle, SAP HANA can be used in that manner uh, if delivered uh, through the right types of applications. What's intriguing to me in the big data context about about uh, systems like HANA and in-memory databases, you know, generally, and HANA specifically, is that, and I want your, your feedback on this, don't you see the possibility that all these devices and machines and all these sources that are generating all this big data could be a direct input to operational systems where HANA is the underpinning of those systems and to enable new types of analytics to be done in near real time, or if not real time? Sure. Well, I mean, you know, when, when HANA was released, we heard a lot about being, uh, you know, both, both to support transactional and analytic workloads. Uh, so if you think about it, in, 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 if, if it's used to its fullest in both cases, kind of create a full loop where you, do, you use it to support transactions, perform the analytics, and then loop those uh, analytics back into the operational uh, side of the equation. We don't see a lot of people doing that yet. It's mostly still focused on analytics at this point, not supporting transactional uh, systems. But yeah, I mean, certainly, you know, we, we've talked to, uh, of course, our own David Floyer has talked a lot about kind of uh, this type of model uh, being uh, developed going forward with flash technology and some other technology. So it's a it's a capability, uh, or I should say, a, a possibility. But I don't see a lot of people doing that. Okay, so what are you looking for at this event uh, specifically in terms of I mean, what does SAP have to do at this event specifically to be uh, successful with its HANA messaging? Well, I would, a uh, couple things. So for the HANA messaging in particular, uh, we need to see some proof points. We need to see some uh, customers and some real success stories. Um, they should be out there. They did uh, 160 million euro business, HANA business last year. Uh, presumably that's growing at an even uh, faster rate now. So they've done a lot of business. That means there should be a fair number of successful deployments that we, sh that we should see uh, here this week. Uh, if we see that, uh, you know, turning last year was a lot about vision, what HANA could do for you in the future. This year's got to be about here's what people are doing with HANA today. So you're talking about 160 million euros, so a couple hundred million plus in uh, in revenue for the year. Right. Where do you see that number going this year? Will it double, triple, quadruple? I, I don't know if it's going to quadruple, but I certainly see it. Uh, I think doubling is something they could do. 
I think it's possible. Um, it, it depends. Uh, I'd like to see a little bit more insight into the kind of demographics around who's adopted it so far. I'm imagining it's going. You know, it's mostly. Um, obviously, it's, it's mainly SAP customers to begin with. It's not necessarily going out and finding new business to a degree, perhaps. But uh, so it'll be interesting to see how how much of they uh, they've kind of moved SAP HANA into their existing customer base. But that says it's a billion dollar business within three or four years, two or two and a half, three years well, look, even. It, it, it certainly could be. I mean, this is all about enabling frontline workers to do ad hoc, uh, quick analytics to make better business decisions. And that's kind of been what we've been, we've been hearing about that for years. Uh, Self-service BI some, was called a few years ago, and it's, it's that term still used occasionally. So, you know, we've been, we've been waiting for this for a long time. And Frankly, SAP and Business Objects promised to deliver this a few years ago, and to a degree they did. But uh, you know, I think we're still waiting. SAP with Business Objects promised to deliver self-service self BI service. And, and kind of you know BI for the masses. Right. But if you look at the numbers, most any given organization, usually no more than twenty or thirty percent of the organization is using BI tools. So certainly not pervasive yet. There's a big well, and of course the Success Factors acquisition is now Success Factors does have self-service, but it's a very very narrow. I don't know if you follow the you know the, the 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 HR market, but uh, but it's a very narrow uh, segment of that market, particularly around talent management and and, and mm -hmm. acquisition or merely man talent management versus sort of the core HR, right? right? My benefits, how many vacation days I have, I mean, things like that. It's more uh, my understanding of success factors, and you know you may know better than I, is it's really around. Um, Cultivating talent, you know, rating people, and making sure that mm -hmm. their their compensation is aligned really yeah. with that. Keeping right? uh, kind of uh, identifying and uh, keeping employees on the right career track, essentially, uh, rewarding them when it's warranted and that kind of thing. Now, uh, SAP also has core HR mm -hmm. in its um, you know its main enterprise application suite, but uh, that my understanding is that's really not self service. It's kind of right. you know old well, generation HR meets SaaS with success factors, right? Yeah. That's, and that's, so, that's one way to look at it, yep. Yeah, whereas, you know, you look at something like PeopleSoft was more core HR, mm -hmm. right, sort of competitive with SAP. Oracle uh, buys PeopleSoft and obviously has that. But now you see some companies like Success Factors and Workday. And now supposedly Workday is is PeopleSoft plus Success Factors. You know, we'll see if, in fact, yeah. that's the case. They're going to really explode with their, their IPO in the fall. Well, you know, as you said, we have to wait and see. We don't know yet. So. Yeah, so, um, okay, so we're here at Sapphire. Uh, we're here with Jeff Kelly, who's Wikibon's uh, big data analyst. Um, so you you put out a report uh, a few months ago now. It was about four or five months ago. Uh, was it February you put out the yeah. big data report? Uh, and months. you were the first, first and still to this day only, I think, to quantify the market share um, figures around big data. Right. Um, I know. I noticed in the wiki that you've made several changes. I mean, that sort of was the intent. Put it out there, get some feedback. Um, missed some things. Kind of miss. I know we missed NetApp by a mile. Sure did. Um, we had them virtually having no big data revenue. Turns out they've done deals that were many, many times the larger single deals larger than the big data revenue that we had initially estimated. Okay, so there's a couple of rounding errors in there, but hey, you know, corrected those. I, th I think you've made some adjustments to to Hannah as well. Yeah. I think you did. You underestimate. Uh, SAP's big data? Or? Yeah, we did. I think I think when we when we initially uh, was do, were doing the research around that report, uh, we we didn't really think Hana fit the definition of big data uh, for a number of reasons, but mainly because it's you know it's a structured, basically optimized for structured data, not the multi-structured data. It was being used in somewhat traditional means. It really hadn't been. Uh, we hadn't seen a lot of use cases, or I should say, customer uh, success stories, despite all the revenue we've been hearing about. Uh, so you know, we thought it, we kind of thought of it as okay. It's basically basically SAP applications. They're running faster, great. But that's not what we think of when we think of big data. Um, you know, after meeting with SAP, uh, talking with them a little bit about getting their perspective on how they see big data. Uh, you know, they're gonna. I think you're gonna hear this week. Uh, if they tell the story, they, they kind of uh, told me and and uh, John earlier this year. They've got a pretty good big data story if they tell it correctly. But you know, it's in terms of was is Hana big data? As I explained, we think it is now, but initially we didn't really. Um, we looked at it as more of a traditional, uh, a tool to support traditional types of workloads. Well, it's cool technology. I said at the top of the show that SAP customers are, are starving for cool technology, right? I mean, you know, let's face it, supply chain as a you know technology 
yeah. trend is not that <clears throat> enticing. They got cloud. You got, I mean, you know, essentially the success success factors acquisition I see as a as a as a cloud play. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, right? You've got Hana, which is you know Hasso's pet project, which is him, and that guy is obviously a visionary. He's clearly built a tremendously successful company. So there's some cool stuff going on there. The Sybase acquisition, when I first heard about it, Sybase, I haven't thought about Sybase in forever. It turns out they're actually a leader in mobile and instant messaging. So, you know, that's an interesting play. But can they pull all these pieces together? That's the uh, sixty-four million dollar question. I, you know, I think they certainly have. Uh, the ability to do it. I think they have to keep uh, keep focus. I think they need to do. You know, they need to explain their message, especially around big data, in a, in a more compelling way. Um, you know, can they do it? Potentially. I mean, there's a lot going on at this company right now. It's all about mobile, but it's also about big data. It's about analytics, but it's about cloud. So there's a lot going on right now. Uh, I think if they focus and take incremental steps, it's something they can pull off. But it's not going to be an easy job. But I mean, is it? Isn't it the fact that, I mean, the, the predominance of their revenue today is the supply chain business, it's the ERP, it's the maintenance on that business. I mean, you know, like a lot of large companies, I would say the same thing with EMC. I mean, EMC's, you know, you're talking cloud and, and big data, but they're living off of, you know, symmetrics and, and VNX revenues and, and the maintenance and services around them. The key is, can you acquire these assets, you know, invent some, but acquire them, integrate them where necessary, it's not always necessary, and then, and then move the market forward. Um, you know, Oracle's another one, you know, that um, you, you're seeing, you know, big projects around integration and making a lot of noise and, you know, the Sun acquisition. But, you know, the core of Oracle's business is still that, you know, core database and the maintenance around that. Mm -hmm. um, let's back to SAP. I mean, are you seeing evidence that they actually are moving the needle in that direction? A uh, couple hundred million plus in, in HANA revenues? Mm -hmm. That's an indication. You know, are there others? Well, I, like I said, I haven't seen a lot of customer success stories, which I'm looking for this week. I mean, I think, I, I totally agree with you. I mean, their business is, think SAP, you think ERP. And that's kind of, uh, that's their core business. Now, the good news is that HANA is kind of, is kind of a, a technology that can help them both even further that business and continue it and build a new line of business around some of these more advanced analytic functions and applications. So I'm not seeing a lot yet. I'm expecting to see some of that this week. Some customers really pushing the envelope. Uh, so I think they're trying to. I think they're kind of hedging their bets a little bit. They're, they're they're using Hana to really support their existing business, which is the bulk of their revenue, and trying to place themselves in a position where they're ready for the future when uh, more advanced analytic capabilities start to catch up. What do you make of the statement that Larry Ellison made around um, SAP getting into you know the database business? He said that's like me playing basketball against Kobe, um, <laughs> which is kind of funny you know Larry's known for f funny tongue-in-cheek statements but isn't it more like um, you know Kobe and Tom Brady in a wrestling match you know what I'm saying I mean it's because isn't SAP strategy it's SAP strategy is not to necessarily take Oracle head-on is it isn't it to try to develop sort of new database applications around mobile I mean talk about that well a little I think bit. you know they'd love to displace Oracle in as many accounts as they can Who wouldn't but but it ain't easy, right? Right. But they're also they're 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 kind of working with, you know, they're working. One of their big partners is uh, IBM around DB2 and integration with with Hana. So, you know, they're not. I don't think they're looking to to take on, despite what what the company said last year, they want to be number two in the database business by 2015. They've backed off. Overtaking off. IBM. Yeah, they've backed off. Or Microsoft off actually, right? So no, well, is it Microsoft number one or is Oracle number one? Uh, I believe Oracle's number one. And then Microsoft to be number two. Yeah. So and then IBM three, I believe, three yeah. and then so SAP would be the, right uh, now they're 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 down the well five or six or yeah something. they're Who just knows? they're just building their database right. business so so to know. become number two that's a pretty lofty goal I mean, they've kind of backed away from that because yeah, overtake they Microsoft is non-trivial right. I mean Microsoft's got a good hold on the right. such a huge volume market yeah I, I think that might have been a little overly ambitious but um, I think you're it's interesting your analogy you know they're not I don't really think. Even SAP thinks they're going to really hit that number, but I think they are looking to change the paradigm a little bit. Where, you know, certainly, no one's getting rid of their DB2 or their Oracle databases for the most part. They're going to be there for a while, but if they can place Hana in a, in a position to improve upon those investments, to, to help people uh, improve performance around their applications and actually leverage their investments they made over the years in these more traditional database technologies, I think that's probably a good strategy. 
All right, we're here with Jeff Kelly, Wikibon's big data analyst. And uh, Jeff, I appreciate you coming by and sharing your thoughts about uh, what to look for. So we're here for the next couple of days. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeff's going to be roaming the floor and uh, talking to customers, talking to folks and technologists from SAP. And you know, we're here in the Global Communications Center, AKA Blogger Lounge. So there's a lot of smart people running around that uh, that cover this. We've got uh, we've got Alex Williams on the ground as well. He's scouring the uh, the show, and you've got I know a number of appointments. We're going to be uh, checking out uh, Bill McDermott's talk shortly. Mm -hmm. He goes on at what four thirty? Four thirty. Mm -hmm. So we'll we'll cover that. They're not streaming it live, um, and so you know I guess they want you to go register to see what Bill McDermott has to say. But we will be monitoring it live, and we will uh, we'll definitely be reporting to you. So um, keep it right here. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with SiliconAngle.tv. TV's continuous coverage of Sapphire Now 2012. Be right back.